Lambda max is the wavelength of photons, particles of electromagnetic radiation, of which a substance is emitting the most of. On an emission spectra, this is usually the highest peak. The available electron energy levels are unique to each atom or molecule, and these available energy levels are what determine lambda max. The wavelength of a photon is directly related to the amount of energy it induces when the electron absorbs or emits it. And that is given by this equation, where E is the energy that one photon has, and H and C are constants, and lambda is the wavelength of that photon. When an electron absorbs a photon, it jumps up to a new energy level. Then, um, molecular vibrations cause the energy of that molecule to decrease a little bit, and that energy is lost in the form of infrared radiation. But then to return to its relaxed ground state, the electron must emit another photon of this energy to return to its ground state. This change in energy also corresponds to a different specific wavelength, and a specific wavelength corresponds to a certain visible light color that can be seen. Take the example of throwing a baseball in the air. The baseball represents the electron, while the height the ball reaches after being thrown corresponds to the different energy levels that an electron can reach. In this example, the ball isn't being thrown high at all. It takes less energy to throw a ball to this height like it takes less energy for an electron to reach a lower energy level. This low energy input is analogous with the short arm motion of the ball thrower, like an electron absorbing a high wavelength photon. Now take this example of a ball being thrown higher. You can see the more arm movement required to reach the higher height, i.e. more energy required. This is similar to an electron absorbing a short wavelength photon, as short wavelength photons have more energy. An important note about this example is how the ball falls down back to the hand, or what we consider to be the ground state of the ball. It would take a considerable amount of energy to keep the ball at its excited state in the air compared to when it's at its ground state, as it would be fighting gravity. Think about how it's more energetically favorable for an electron to relax back to its ground state. This experiment focused solely on the emission of photons within the visible light spectrum as the task was to analyze the light emitted from glow sticks. According to theory, the energy held in an atom's electrons is quantized, meaning certain atoms can only absorb and emit certain wavelengths and energies of light. Due to how specific these wavelengths are, different colors of visible light can be described as having different energies and wavelengths. This is evident in the logical graph. The blue plot with the two peaks is representative of the different intensities and maximum wavelengths of the green and red dye when mixed. The taller green peak is representative of the green dye's lambda max, and the smaller brown peak is representative of the red dye's lambda max. Therefore, the wavelength of emitted light is determined by the color of the substance being analyzed. This is shown in a color wheel diagram of the colors and wavelengths within the visible light spectrum. Conclusion. The observed color of a substance is determined by the light the substance emits. When a substance is emitting light, the substance electrons are emitting charged particles known as photons. These photons can be quantized and they're discrete to their wavelengths. These wavelengths correspond to total energy derived from E equals HC over lambda a photon can carry, of which the relationship wavelength and energy is inversely related. The emission spectra gives insight into the range of photons, each with a discrete quantum of energy that a substance emits. This range can be measured and compared to the known ranges of visible color. In the visible light spectrum, observable colors correspond to a unique range of wavelengths. If the wavelength of an emitted photon is in the range of one color, then the observed color will correspond to the emitted photons. It would then be reasonable to assume that if the substance is emitting light at an observable color, the lambda max of that emission spectra of the photon being emitted with the greatest intensity would fall in the wavelength range of that observable color, thus giving us the conclusion that the substance observable color can be determined by its lambda max.